book of Matthew. We started at Matthew 1, um, 2, 3, 4. Today we're doing 5. And how awesome is it to... How awesome is it to be able to preach or to bring the word, the word in today's age and what's happening in today, actually happening today in the world? Because on everybody's lips this morning, there's only one word. They look at the news, they look at anything that's going around, and there's one word, I'm not going to name it because I'm tired of it, but you know what it is. Okay. But now my question is to you. Why are you scared of it? Why are you scared of, of, of this specific thing? It does not have legs. It can't, it can't move without you. But we're scared of it. And we go around and, and we have this attitude of, Lord, please save us. But maybe we must change our attitude. And maybe we must change our attitude to, Lord, you are bigger than this thing. You've got a plan with this thing. And even if I get this thing, Lord, that you have a plan with me. Because if we ultimately remember that the Lord is in control, why are we scared of something that can be taken out of control? What are we, why are we scared of something that can be treated? Where if the Lord comes... And you say, Lord, you take control of this thing. Some anxiety is going to go away. And some fear that's been struck in a lot of people here would disappear. Because fear is not real. Fear is only a thing that's in your head. But the love of Jesus is real. So I really just feel this morning, let's pray against this thing. So I just want to pray. And if you can pray with me. You don't need to follow what I say. But if you can just in spirit, just pray with me against it. So that we don't live in this fear anymore. But that we live in the promise of Jesus. And that he is enough. That he is bigger than this thing. And that our eyes must be focused on him in this day and age. Because a year from now, two weeks from now, we're going to tell people, remember that time? The overcomer, the only winner in that time was Jesus. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, Lord, I I just want to come before you, Lord, and I just want to pray against each and every fear. I want to pray against each and every person that even thinks that they can get this in the name of Jesus that they shall not. And Lord, even if they do, that they will rejoice in you, Lord, because Lord, you are in control. And as long as we know and know in our hearts that you are in control, Lord, what else can be against us? If you're for us, Lord, who else and what else can be against us? Let's pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning, I want to I talk a little bit about our attitude. So we have to have a certain attitude towards things. And Jesus wants us to have a certain attitude. And I'm, yes, you're right, I'm pre- preaching about the Beatitudes. And it's quite cool. It says, be attitude and that word attitude is in there because I really feel that we have to have some kind of attitude when it gets to Jesus and his and and the work that he wants to do it's like having this attitude that I have against this thing that people are fearing in this day of age having a kind of attitude against maybe people that 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 are struggling to get work or maybe having that attitude of of just having mercy on someone that's really struggling through something. Or maybe having an attitude of blessing someone in a, in a certain way that is honoring to God. The Lord wants you to use your attitude and the way that he put you together and take some of his beatitudes and add it to your attitude so that you can have a kingdom attitude. Because he's made us all in a certain way. So I really want to ask you guys if you've got your Bible here or your digital Bible or your phone, if you can just please, please open Matthew 5 from verse 1. So in verse 1, so first of all, it's called the Sermon on the Mount. 
And the reason why it's called the Sermon on the Mount is because Jesus did the Sermon on the Mountain. There's nothing special about it. He sat down on a mountain. But the very interesting thing that he did here, while he was talking to them and ministering to the people, he was actually sitting down. And how many of us know if you go into someone's office or someone tells you, listen, let's have a chat, let's sit down. We know it's serious. We know it's true. And we know that you I have to listen. And there's no specific time allocated to this meeting when someone does, does this, when they sit down with you and have a chat with you. And this is what Jesus did. Very interesting thing. He was talking to believers at this time. So please just keep that in the back of your mind. That these are people that have already been saved and know that, it, that knew Jesus. And it was more than just the 12 disciples. They also say that there was others there. And as they were sitting, I'm just going to read from us from verse 3. And Jesus said to them, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are those, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And then he says, blessed are those who prosecute it because of their righteousness, for they will see the heaven, for they will see heaven. So there's one specific word that he starts each sentence with, and it's the word blessed. You know, and as Christians, we quite use this word a lot. So I'm going to give you a secret, and please don't hold this against all of our believers sitting here. When you talk to others, you know, you get into a conversation, and you realize this guy talks way too much. And you're like, I have to get out of this situation. And then you say, bless you, man. Sure, God bless you, but you know, I have to go. But bless you, and he'll keep quiet because you're throwing a blessing on him, and he'll be like, okay, cool. And then, and then you get yourself out of it. And when he uses that word bless, he's actually saying, you are talking too much. I need to leave you right now. So it's just a little bit of a tip there. You can use it, don't use it. Maybe use it in a different way. But there was also this guy, Pope Gregory the First. So signs of back then, I don't know what, 19, what that was in, or 18 or 17, because he was the first pope. He would, signs of the plague would be a cough or a sneeze. So what will happen is, when someone coughs or sneezes, he will say, God bless you. And he would do that because he believed that that was a small prayer to save people from a certain death. Imagine he made a prayer out of two words, God bless you. And that's why sometimes we still say, bless you, when people sneeze or cough or, or do any kind of sound that we just feel, bless you. Yeah. Um, but now we get to the real word, the real meaning of the word bless or blessing or being blessed. And that real meaning of that word, I can't say this Greek word, I tried, but I really, I'm not good in this language. I thought if it was in Zulu, I would be much better, but the, translated, it's actually something like happy or inner joy. I was thinking to myself, but how can you explain to someone what is happiness or inner joy? Like, how can you bes explain blessing, a blessing? And actually, I don't have the words for it, because it, to me, it's like a waterfall of a bunch of emotions that you walk through and you get showered with these emotion and happiness, a smile of unbelief, a feeling of unbelief that you cannot explain. That to me, in words, trying to explain this to you, that's how a blessing, I feel to explain a blessing. And if you have your own way of thinking about it, I think I'm close to what you feel when you really feel a blessing. But the very interesting thing, it's only people that are saved that has ever experienced a blessing in their lives. Because they know that it's not from a specific person, but that that idea that that person had was from Jesus. So people that are saved experience a blessing really entirely than an unsaved person. 
So now again, I had to go into Wikipedia or go into the internet and really just find the word blessing and what does it mean. So the word bless means to receive. So it means when you receive inheritance or something of value as a sign of favor they have towards you. So that's a blessing. And if you look at that word, it's got two, it's, it's quite loaded. It says that you have an inheritance and you receive something of value from someone that really feels that you're important to them. So just keep that in the back of your mind. And now let's work on our attitudes. So now the first attitude that we have to work on is our spirit. So what, actually what it says here, happy is the poor in spirit. So that's what the word translated mean. But if you put happy in front of there, it sounds quite cool. So happy is the poor in spirit. But the poor in spirit that they are talking about here is not someone that are physically poor of, this, of spirit. He's not about to cut his um, wrists or, or damage himself or hurt himself in any other way. But the person that they are talking to about you, and guys, if this is the only thing you take of this preach, please write this down, because this is very important. If this is the only thing that you remember, let it be this. A person who is poor in spirit is a person that humbly depends on God instead of himself. That's a person that is poor in spirit. His plans are not, is not gonna work but he humbly depends on God and not himself. Just remember that. Add that to your attitude. Start the morning that way. Say, Lord, I depend on you this morning to help me through this day. Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna work with earthly people. or maybe gonna work with unbelievers that have never met you. But I need you, Lord, to intervene in my life so that I can have an impact in their lives. Then he says, blessed to those who mourn. And he doesn't just talk here about physical people that are mourning for, for the dead. And yes, if you mourn for the dead, it's good because which means that you really loved them and they really loved you. But the mourning that Jesus is talking to about to believers to this morning, is he says, these are the kind of people that mourn for sins. They go and they, they feel sad because of the sins in this world. They mourn about their sins. They mourn about they're in this world where they have this awesome Father, this awesome God. And they mourn because they know that they're in a sinful world and that they could sin today because they are not perfect. And they mourn about those sins. Thinking about them and working on them because they know that they are not perfect. Something to add to your attitude. Blessed is the meek. I love this word, this word is loaded. I mean, meek means self-control. Meek means humble. Meek means that you have self-discipline. And if you're meek, back in those Roman times, back in, those, in the times where they have to choose armies, you would be one of David's elite men. Because David could use people like that, that had self-control, that had self-discipline, that was humble, willing to listen to instruction given to them by someone in a higher authority than them. That's the meek. It's something to think of and something to add to your attitude. I'm loading and I'm adding to your attitude. And then there's this interesting one, I like this one. It also says, hunger is those who thirst, or blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. I was thinking about this word, and I was like, but how do I explain this word? Because I had something for all of them, but now it's this specific meaning, no, hunger and thirst. And I realized something that every morning and every day, we get hungry and we are thirsty. We are reminded by us, by our DNA, by our heads, and by how we are put together, that we get hungry and thirsty. And we quench our thirst, and we eat when we are hungry, because it's something that we do naturally. 
And I really just felt the Lord say to me, but I want you to be like that every day. I want you to wake up and be hungry and thirsty to see the righteousness of Jesus happen in this world, in this earth, in the place where you are involved in daily. Do you know that where you are, wherever you work, and wherever you are involved in, that you are there for a purpose? And that if you are there, that you have the upper hand because you've got a great father that, that gives you authority wherever you are. And if you use it very clever, if you're very clever about it, and you know the person that you're talking about and you've spent time with them, you can see righteousness happening in their lives. You can be there for them. Blessed are those who are merciful. And this just this ties in nicely with the hunger and thirst for righteousness because people that are merci merciful have compassion on others. They go out and they, they take their compassion and they, they really just have compassion on others. Because yesterday we were actually out on our prayer walk and it was amazing. We had opportunities to pray for people that were begging and there was a guy that came up to run from nowhere and run an opportunity to pray for him. And we felt this heaviness in the area where we were praying. And I was praying for this one guy, the robot, and his name is Rudy. And I just felt, Lord, I just want to have mercy on him. I just want you to have mercy on him. And I just want you to, to have compassion on him. Doesn't matter what he needs to do. As I was standing and praying there for him, I was feeling this physical feeling of, he's not standing there because it's, it's easy to beg. I just felt this thing, he's doing this for his family. And that he really has no out. And as he spoke to me, I realized that he couldn't actually talk properly. But I just prayed for him. Like, we don't know what happened to him, but we know that the Lord was busy there. And it was a great opportunity to, to exercise some of these attitudes that we have that the Lord has given us. Opportunities to go to prayer walks and pray for people. It was, it was really, it was amazing. The next one. Blessed is the pure in heart. I was thinking of this one, you know. We, we are not going to be 100% pure of heart. I mean, I, I just want bigger bikes and more money and everything because I'm a, I'm a normal human being and I'm a man and I like tires, wheels and motors and engines and petrol and the smell of, the wonderful smell of tires burning. Not the ones in a township, but when they spin. And... Um, Blessed is the pure in heart, and, and this came to me. You know, someone that's really pure in heart will come to you without an agenda. He will come with you and he'll say that I am a Christian. Yes, I know that I am a Christian. Yeah, but he will come to you only and approach you only with this pure of heartness where he will come to you humbly and he'll say, you know what, I've got your best interest in, in mind. You know what, I'm really praying for you. And I really feel that's the pure in heart. It's something that we can, we can use each one of these by beatitudes, add them to our attitudes, and use them in different times in our daily walk because we are busy with different people daily. And last but not least, blessed is the peacemaker. So, okay, about eight years ago, nine years ago, I gave my heart to the Lord, never knowing that I entered a family business, automatically part of a family business, and I did not know this, until I worked through the Beatitudes and I realized I was serving in this business for way too long. I wonder what my pension looks like in this place. But the day when you gave your heart to the Lord, you became part of a business. This business is still working at this very moment in different places in the world and has been working from years ago. It's been coming. And this business is the business of reconciliation. It's the business of peace. And when you gave your heart to the Lord, you became a peacemaker and a part of his business. Yes, we know the ultimate peacemaker, our CEO, and the one that paid the ultimate price is Jesus Christ. He's the ultimate peacemaker, and we, we will never be able to do what he did. 
But what a privilege it is to be a part of his business and be busy with his work. Peacemakers is just what the word says, they make peace. And if you, if you have given your heart to the Lord, or if you're not sure if you did, or, or if you never knew that you're in this business, let me tell you that you're in this business. And everywhere you went, you had the opportunity to make peace between two people. Maybe a neighbor, maybe a nation and nation, a city and a city. But you were the one sitting on the, you know, you were the third on the third island. The two islands fight, but you will always be on the third island. A peacemaker would not choose a side, but a peacemaker would be neutral in the middle. And he'll say, guys, let's make peace amongst each other. Because peace amongst each other is what Jesus does. He's in the, he's in the business of reconciliation, of giving people that second chance, of giving people that chance of saying, come again, come, we can do this. Let, let's try to do it a little bit differently. I know you guys fight, it's okay. Let's just say hi to each other then. It's, it's a neutral place for you to be. And it's hard for us as people to do that, especially in the environment and the, in the places where we work. But let me tell you this morning that it's not gonna be easy. Because if you read verse 11 and verse 12, actually more verse 11, it says, blessed are those who are insulted, who evil things happen to them and they don't know why and they don't know deserve it. They never did anything wrong, but it just happened to them. Blessed are those. Because if you are in the business of peacekeeping, if you're a peacemaker, those things are gonna follow you and they're gonna be in front of you and they're gonna be behind you and you're gonna battle them and fight them daily. But you need this attitude a kingdom attitude that you have to use to deal with these things. And this is what I've really felt that the Lord told me this morning. He says, yes, you're gonna get opposition. Maybe you drive out here and you get a flat wheel. That's not nice. It's, it's not pleasant at all because you cross at something that can't walk, say anything or nothing because it's just a nail. But you know what, if you have the right attitude in that situation, if you can just wait and sit and think and use some of the Beatitudes, you can handle it better. The person that you're gonna meet, you're maybe gonna encourage. Because the Lord will use all things for his good. Greater is he that's in me, isn't it? And then I was thinking, but we are the salt and the light of this, of this world. I'm not gonna read the whole thing. But the thing is, if you're saved this morning, if, you sit, if, if you're sitting here this morning, and you can just not remember or feel that, you know, I'm, am I really? Or, or you just want the Lord just to, to reignite that fire in your life. I want to ask you to be bold this morning and put up your hand. Maybe, maybe you need to get back into your peacemaking business. Maybe you must rekindle your place there because we easily drift out of that because what is happening in this country? Yes, we do struggle with load shedding. We do struggle with the government. We do struggle with, we've got so many things against us. But how privileged are we to have so many things for us? You've got so many things going for you in South Africa that you don't even know it. People right around the world cannot pray like South Africans prayed. A while back, one of the guys that was here, Brad, he said that he, he travels right around the world. He says nowhere in the world has a million people got, got together and prayed together. It happened in South Africa. Why? Because we know if we're not fighting on our knees, we're gonna lose this battle. We have won a lot of stuff here, and we battle a lot of stuff. But we do that because we are great peacemakers. And I wanna tell you this morning, if you are not a peacemaker, and if you have not given your life to the Lord ever, I wanna give you an opportunity this morning. 
And if you feel this burning desire in your hand, even if you think you've done it before, even if you had, I want to challenge you to put up your hand. Because the reason is, if I challenge you to put up your hand, and you feel that desire in you, that's the Holy Spirit talking to you. And he says he wants to replace you back somewhere in the business. Maybe he wants to to relocate you somewhere into the peacemaking business where you're going to be effective. If you really feel that, I want you to put up your hand. But if you are not willing, if you are not willing to, I must change this word, not willing. If you are not ready, that's the right word. If you're not ready for what the Lord is going to do in your life if you put up your hand, please do not put up your hand. Because if you put up your hand, and I really believe this this morning, the Lord is going to move you and he's going to place you somewhere in his business where he's going to work with you. And if you're not willing and ready for him to change you, please do not put up your hand right now. But if you feel this burning desire in you and the Holy Spirit talking to you, I'm going to urge you to put up your hand and I'll pray for us. So as we close our hands, as we close our eyes now, I'm just going to give you a few minutes to think and to feel. Maybe you've given your life to the Lord before. Maybe, maybe you haven't. Or maybe you just want to reignite that fire. Maybe you just want to reposition yourself in his kingdom somewhere. Maybe you want him to shift you somewhere so that you can live with more peace or be a better peacemaker. I want to give you that opportunity now while no one is looking to put up your hand. And be bold because I can really feel the Holy Spirit is just here this morning. No one's looking around. And thank you for those hands. Thank you, thank you. Lord Jesus, this morning, Lord Jesus, we we are asking you, Lord, work with our attitudes and position us so that we can be effective for your kingdom and where you are busy. Lord, if there's only one thing that people will do this morning is that they will humbly depend on you, Lord, and on nothing else. That they'll reference you, Lord, and nothing else. This morning, Lord, I pray against fear, people that are, that, that are really struck with fear of a lie. I pray in the name of Jesus that that thing will be broken down and that they will walk in victory, that they'll have an attitude of victory. This morning I really pray that people will change the way how they approach others, that they'll have mercy on them, compassion, and that they'll practice their meekness, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that they'll mourn for others that really need you. Lord, that they'll love others that really need your love. And I pray wherever we go this week that we'll have an amazing impact in people's lives. And that next Sunday that we'll come back and say, and have testimonies of what you have done this week. Lord, I pray to stretch our tents. And for each and every person that writes their hands this morning, I really feel that the Lord says, I'm ready to stretch you and I'm ready to do something amazing with you because you were willing to step out. Thank you, Jesus, for each and every person here. Lord, we're also just praying for those that that made a decision to follow you for the first time this morning, just praying for them and saying, Lord, guide them. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen.